What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and this week's guest, I'm so excited. He's one of my dearest friends in comedy. Uh, he has a new special coming out on Tuesday, July 9th on YouTube called Venezuela American. It's my friend, Francisco Ramos. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for having me. Young, of course. Young Hollywood. It's young bad. Hollywood. The reunion is here. <laughs> um, I mean, I have known you forever. Oh, yeah. Since like 2009? Yes. Yeah, maybe you, earlier? Since you got here, pretty since much. Cause... you got here. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get here? No, I was here like 2007 because I started working yeah. as a door guy in 2007. You were a door guy? I was a door guy. I had yeah. no clue. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, that's how I started. That's how I literally started doing stand-up. I had oh, no wow. idea like what stand-up was or how to mm -hmm. do it. So when I got hired here, that's how I learned to basically do stand-up. Yeah. How to do it. And then I want to say like 2000. 10 or 11 is when we went down to the La Jolla Comedy Store. Yes. It was me, you, and Matt Edgar, and Byron Bowers. Byron Bowers, and uh, Fortune Feimster. Fortune Feimster, and... <clears throat> That's it. Was I, that it? I think that was, was it. was like five of us. Yeah. And and the um, uh, old... Uh, Talent coordinator. Old talent coordinator Tommy was like, "This is going to be called the Young Hollywood Tour." We're yeah. like, "We're in San Diego." It's like it's just Friday and Saturday. It's just <laughs> one venue. We're not going anywhere. No tour. Yeah, yeah. There's no other comedy stars. There's nothing at all. We were like, "Okay," and and ever since then we have been the Young Hollywood. The Young now Hollywood. We are, now we're like uh, not so young. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep what, up what with you, these damn kids. I know. It's like now we have to do a TikTok video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready with me as I put on pants. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I am so glad you're here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the special that's coming out. Like, yeah. what are we looking? What is it about? What are we looking? Yeah, no. To? Well, so it was shot last year. I uh, uh, Brad Garrett uh, produced it. Uh, we did it at the Brad Garrett's Comedy Club in Vegas at the inside the MGM. Grand. Oh, you shot it there. I shot it there. Very cool. Yeah, that was yeah because he wanted to do a thing where he wanted to like. Uh, put the specials in his own like website, but it didn't work out. So he was gracious enough to be like, look, you can have it, you know, use it however you want it. So now I, you know, and now it's going to go out with a uh, 800 pound gorilla, you know, on their, on their site and all, you know, and then uh, it's about basically just, you know, I mean, it's called, it's just uh, like a little intro of who I am, like growing up because I moved from, you know, from uh, Venezuela to the U.S. when I was 12. So talking a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. And then last year also, that's when I was getting married. So I talk about, you know, working with a wedding and, you know, trying to like, mm -hmm. you know, set up the wedding with my wife and all this other stuff. So it's just a little bit of everything. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's just a combination of like, which is kind of like the comedy that I like to do. It's like, yeah. I don't like to stick to one subject, but just like every day, you know, universal topics yes. you know, that anybody can relate to. Everybody can relate to. And we just got a uh, lot of people turn this off because they're like, he's married? No! Uh, uh, I know, yes, I uh, know. Should I, should I take my... This little Ricky Ricardo <laughs> over here is taken. Sorry, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> and you got married. I did it. I, I did it. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Uh, you got married last August. Uh, last August. Yes. In yes. Spain. In Spain, in Denia, which is a beach town near um, an hour from Valencia, four hours from Madrid or Barcelona. So uh, it's more like a, like basically like a summer kind of like destination, like if you live in Spain, because it's close to Ibiza. So it's like, Ooh. it's a very cool, like, uh, yeah. It's a very it just cool like wrote like a white lotus kind of a vibe. It, it, it's a little bit like that, you know. There was like a we we took a trip, you know. We had like one day where we had a a boat ride, so mm -hmm. it was like very like you know kind of like the family and friends, just kind of like our white lotus. You passed out Molly to of everybody, of course, my mom, yeah. everybody. <laughs> My mom was raised. It's a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Just everyone had glow sticks grinding their teeth. Oh, <laughs> that's great. And yeah. like when you do a destination wedding, yes. what was the like, was the initial response like, yay, can't wait? <laughs> no, it's like, oh, yeah. no. I mean, Spain's and pretty Spain. far. Yes. But it's like, but my, the only thing is like, my well, our, me and my wife was like, she's from North Carolina. 
Yeah. So what was so. What you play, like flip a coin and just or like spin a globe and yeah, point? Yeah, why why like, Spain? Pretty much like come into America. Yeah. yeah. It's like whoa. Well. Eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Put See. in the seeds. Um, no, but like it was well, my wife actually found the venue okay. like online, like on Instagram. She liked it. It was in, it was in Spain and it was like and I was like, oh, okay. And then lo- for some weird reason, her life, my mom was actually traveling to that city oh. to visit a friend. So then we're like, hey, can you go and check it out to see if it's real? Because you know how you look. <laughs> Are you we know? getting catfished? <laughs> yes, of yeah. course. You know, I go to Instagram and be like, okay, is this? So she went, we actually did like a FaceTime and she shows around and it was like, so then that's when we started, okay, why don't we just do it there? You know, it's just, and then the whole thing is like, because of, again, her family's over there, my family's everywhere, you know, all over the world. I got friends everywhere, all over the world. Then it was like, let's just do a cool, you know, kind of vacation wedding so people yeah. can use it. Not to just to go, I, I know I told people, don't use it to go to my wedding. Use it to you have a vacation for yourself. Yeah. Like either you can travel around Spain or go to, you know, Paris or England or Portugal, whatever, you yeah. know, there's like, so that was the idea. You know, obviously some people couldn't make it, but most, you know, most of the people who wanted to be there were there. So that was pretty cool. You know? That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's great when you can make it a destination wedding where it's exactly. like, yeah, you're going to come to our wedding, but also like, we want you to go explore. And exactly. Kind of do that was the whole thing to push people to be like, hey, especially people that haven't traveled that much. You know, mm-hmm. I think more of her side of the family it was like, it was like a new thing, you know. A lot of like, North Carolina. A lot of, you know. <laughs> yeah. So <they're> wow. Like, <laughs> they got cobblestones here. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. They got a... Uh, well, what? They're speaking a weird language. <laughs> yeah. What? What's That's plantain? <laughs> yeah. That's but, great. But yeah, so it was that. And then uh, that was like the the reason. But I, yeah, I think it turned out really cool. I mean, everything, you know, everybody enjoyed it. Everybody had a really great time. You could see that, you know, and that was the main thing. We just wanted to have everybody to enjoy their, you know, because we appreciate everybody. You know, it takes, you know, money and time to just mm-hmm. go there and travel. But like, but we made it, uh, we had different activities throughout the, you know, we had like a little recept, you know, a little uh, welcome cocktail on Thursday with a cool little like, yeah. DJ, you know, that was pretty cool, which was like, it was one of those DJs like, well, let's see if this guy's good. And he was like, really fucking good. Where like, you know, where I was like, oh, this is guys, like, can I use you for the wedding too, you know? Oh, ah, yeah. well, what, what was the, um, well, I have a question. Were children invited? Uh, yes. I mean, oh. I, I mean, I, I, I can't, I had to, you know, it's not like, well, well <laughs> It was a story that some lady, like, this was months ago, and it was like, no kids. Oh, God. Like, she said no kids, and people brought kids. And she was like, I said no kids. Yeah, yeah. See, we had, uh, I I went to a wedding over the weekend, and and, and we'll get into a little bit more of that. But so, what was the... uh, No, I didn't tell, because most of my friends now, they're, you know, they have kids. They have kids, yeah. So, it's like, I can't. But I did. you want to fly international with your kids? Do it. No, they did. Go for it. And a lot of them, mostly what they did, they all brought their, either their mom, or they hire a nanny or something and they left them left them in the hotel in the hotel you know for the wedding you know like the only ones that were there were just like maybe like my nephew you know because he was part of the wedding and then another my one of my friend's kids but that was pretty much it so it wasn't like a lot of kids but and a lot of them so my friends came with kids but they didn't bring them to the wedding and to wh- the actual wedding what was the song she walked out to uh it was uh uh Toto by Af- Africa by Toto. I'm sorry, you mean Africa by Toto? Yes. <laughs> Not Toto by Africa. <laughs> Wait, but like the classical but version? The classical version, which we found in you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Yacht Rock on yeah, the wedding? Exactly. Okay. Because she was like, that was like one of her favorite songs. So we uh, we used that. And then um, and then we, our song was... Um, like the first dance song? The first dance song was... Um, uh, can uh, what's I that can't set? help falling in love with you? No, 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 oh. no. It was that uh, that red, red, uh, red, red bone. Um, something about love. I should oh. know this. Uh, red bone. Yeah, I think that's the name of the of the band. Red bone. Uh, dun, 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 dun. No, uh, that's that's Toto. Uh, well, let's see. Let's You're like see. Bone Thugs in Harmony. <laughs> 
<laughs> See you at the crossroads. Come and get your love. That one. Oh, come and get your love. Come that and one. get your, your love. love. Come and get your love. Come that and get your one, love. But one. not the nineties. No, no, it was like a like a like, a, like the original like. Hey color. now. And we had a hey we had actually we actually rehearsed the whole thing. You know, I did oh. everything because one of her friends is an uh, is like a. Choreographer, so we rehearsed it, but then the DJ oh, no. messed it up. He, one. No, he played the he played in the own, you know, he had, he had to start like in, I don't know, you know, second 35, and then he started like earlier or like right in the beginning. So we kind of had to like improvise. Oh. Which was like the most annoying thing because like we practiced this and then oh, like, and the DJ messed, it, messed up. it up. And then now you're like, you're trying to like improvise, and people are going like, what are they doing? <laughs> Are they ill? Oh, no. <laughs> this episode of Just Saying is brought to you in part by Rocket Money. Have you guys ever found any unwanted subscriptions that you just don't know if you paid for or not? I know I have. Guys, we are very unaware of everything that we're subscribing to. From all the apps, from all of the um, transactions, they all add up. And sometimes we just don't notice it. Well, now there is an app that takes control of all of your finances and puts it right in front of you so you are very aware of what you are paying for, and that is rocket money. Most Americans think they spend about $62 a month on subscriptions, and guys, that is not the case. It's more along the lines of $300 a month. That is literally thousands of dollars a year, half of which we've probably forgotten about. And thankfully, I started using Rocket Money, and they found a bunch of subscriptions I'd forgotten all about, and then they helped me cancel the ones that I don't want anymore. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can actually start saving. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save over $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions today by going to rocketmoney.com slash Sayin, S-A-Y-I-N. That's rocketmoney.com slash Sayin. That's rocketmoney.com slash Sayin. Start saving. Yeah, Let me nah. tell you about my trip. I went to a wedding over the weekend yeah. in Baltimore, Maryland. It was great. Okay. Our That's friend where I grew up. Really? Yeah. Well, not in Maryland, but more like D.C., Maryland. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was a very comfortable 106 okay. with humidity. Okay, outside, I, obviously. Yes, outside, um, very humid, but I just love that city. It's just really, really pretty and just old. Yeah. Just, I didn't realize how old it was. Like, you just yeah. look and you're like, oh my God, there's like, Tons of I was ports, for, you know, it's, it's gritty, gritty, and like, yeah. like I was waiting for like guys with like you know patriot hats on, like <laughs> the different kinds, okay. you know, like actual colonial okay, okay. hats, <laughs> um, not the other, not the like, oh, <laughs> not the, the one with the hats. hats. <laughs> but yeah, it was just really fun. We and it was at the Four Seasons, and you know, our friend Stacy and Craig, congratulations to you guys. It was a beautiful wedding, and I just loved it because it was just. The family was so welcoming. You never okay. know what you're getting into. This is, so who got invited? To, who's like, you're going to his wedding because who? Evan. Evan's okay. like friend from college. Got it. And they've been together for like 10 years. They finally tied the knot and like the families were all together. So you don't know anybody there. I knew her and I knew him. So I knew the bride and groom and then a, one or two other people. Okay. And then everybody else, I was just kind of like, oh God, we're the gays from LA. <laughs> what are we getting into? <laughs> and um, no, everyone was just so wonderful. That's cool. I made like a whole bunch of new friends. Um, we did a boat ride mm -hmm. Friday night, and it was kind of fun because you know her name was Stacy, so yeah, they played Stacy's mom has got to go, uh, on, which I good. never thought would be like at a wedding, and I was like, this is so much fun. Yeah. Um, we did like a pool day before, like mm -hmm. Friday, and the actual wedding was on Saturday. Okay. Right? So, oh, Friday, <laughs> we go to the pool, and we got, like, we had ceviche, we had, um, I forget what else we had, we had, but I remember we had ceviche and, I want to say, like, chips and guac or something, I don't okay. know. Okay. And, um... Raw food. Yeah, Friday night we went out, and we, like, went to a club, there might have been, like, 
a swinger there who was like, okay. who, like how did I, you know it was a swinger? Because I think he was just working, but like new was just like playing along, being like, uh, eh, whatever you guys need, uh, <laughs> and I mean, whatever you guys need, and we're like, and we're like, what? Wait, is it? Why is that the the the, the mode? Yeah, hey. it was just like whatever you guys want. Whoa. I'm your guy, <laughs> and we were like. Gross. Like, got Roger like, Rabbit. Like, you're like five. Cat. Yeah, get out of here. Um, this was at the club? This was at the club, yes, okay. in the Four Seasons. And then um, we, uh, Saturday morning, I wake up and I am like, oh, I am not well. Oh, I am oh. not well at all. Like, what? <sighs> Do you remember that scene in. <laughs> Bridesmaids, uh, when she runs out into the, the street and says, yes, it's happening. The bathroom. It's happening. Yes. That was what was happening. Oh, the ceviche. It, or was it this guy? I don't know. Maybe it was like, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure it was the ceviche because there was a piece of ceviche that I was like, this is a little warm. Mm. And you're not, you can't, you never have, you shouldn't have warm ceviche. That's what, yes, I know. And I, 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 it was also 106 degrees. True. And I was like, maybe it's just been like sitting out in the sun, but maybe it shouldn't maybe be sitting it out in the sun. Maybe it shouldn't be, yeah. I shit the bed, literally. Oh. Um, <laughs> Wait, you woke up like that? Mm. Like you didn't even realize you were doing it? Mm. <laughs> Evan was getting his hair done in the other room, <laughs> and I screamed, and I never thought that I would. Like the Godfather, when he like, found the, the horse? <gasps> like, like, the jewel went like this, it's like, yeah. <gasps> like, there's, like the horse head. <laughs> horse head in the bed. Yeah, and it was also like, like Romeo, when he finds out that like Juliet's dead, and he's like, <laughs> oh, fortune's fool. Yes, very much like that. So I get into panic mode and I strip the entire bed and I throw it off to the side and I call Evan. Like you murder somebody. Like there is a full throttle murder. <laughs> and I finally Evan picks up. He's like, I have like eight missed calls from you. I'm getting my hair done. I'm like, the girls are getting their hair done. You can do your hair. You know how to do your hair. I'm like, get over here now. And he comes over and he's like, what's up? And I'm like, it happened. And he's like, what? I'm like, <laughs> it happened. Do you remember in Back to the Future 2 when yeah. Jennifer from the future meets Jennifer yes. from the past? Yes, yes. And, they and cross, then they cross. And she's like, I'm young, I'm yeah, old. It yeah. was that. Uh -huh. That was that moment. <laughs> so I'm like, I have to tell this person that I'm with, who I love, who we share a place yes. together. We're about to move into a new place together. Yeah. I'm like, this, this, is, is, this is happening. Yeah. And I tell him, I'm like, it's over there. Don't look. <laughs> and I, and I, I bundled everything up. And I go, what do we do? Like, we had murdered someone. But was there police tape around there it? There was caution tape. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was so humiliating. I was so embarrassed. And he's like, I got this. And I'm like, yeah. what do we do? He goes, ah. we blame it on the baby. So this wow. baby, there was a baby there. Okay. Wait, but so but you, you guys are staying in, in this? In, in a, a hotel room. Okay. Yeah. There was a baby on the trip. Okay. And like the cutest little baby in the world. I was like totally clinging to this baby like yeah. on the boat. We're like dancing and everything. Uh -huh. um, we say that they came over and she was changing the baby. In the bed and, and then the baby. Yeah. We're like, stupid wow. baby. But it's the baby. <laughs> but if we're, I'm, I'm talking like, if I'm a, let's say I'm a detective. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to know what happened here. So I go in the room and I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, when I want to see the evidence. Mm -hmm. And when I see the evidence, do I go like, this is not babies. Well, no, we this had, is too much for a baby. No, 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 no. Gerber, <laughs> Gerber makes a ceviche now. Oh. Yeah. It's, so, it's, it's, oh, it's okay. Is this... Gerber ceviche. All it's right. Like, it's like whole Gerber foods. ceviche. Yeah. Warm. Gotta, you gotta you gotta heat it up. Yes, it's farmers market only. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. It's farmers market only. So we tell the we tell the like cleaning people they're like oh yeah we'll come over at like 4 30 and i'm like great we'll both be gone out of the room okay. we can get the hell out of here yeah the the cleaning staff at the four seasons baltimore 10 out of 10 really we they are the best like it, they came in and just like forensic like fixer they like they like, like paul in. fiction like <laughs> it was like paul fiction's like all right we're gonna New do bed a spread Shh, no like shower. no wandering eyes in Nothing. the hallway like i know what you did <laughs> like no one somebody going like yeah yeah hey, they're like mm -hmm. yeah there it is yeah they're not checking their surveillance footage being like there was never a baby that went into like, that room you know <laughs> <laughs> like when they when you got checked out they didn't go like 
Nice. Uh, come again, Mr. Ceviche. I'm like, <laughs> who told you? <laughs> wow. Um, so nothing. They didn't say anything. No, it was fantastic. However, it get like the whole day, I'm like, damn, I can't eat any. Like, I was Oh, yeah, because of course. And you were feeling still kind of weird. Right? I like, ne yeah. I've never had food poisoning. Yeah. Never, ever had food poisoning. So I'm just like, it's COVID. Yeah. Immediately, I'm like, this is diarrhea yeah, COVID. Yeah, yeah. It's probably new. Yeah. It's called the flirt COVID strain. I'm like, this is what they're doing. <laughs> they flirt with your fucking guts and you can't trust anyone or anything. <laughs> Not even a baby. Even yeah, God. So I, this is very personal, but we've already broken the Yeah, I think I mean like, I was like, I have like never sure. used the restroom as much as I did over the like I'm saying so you still had 30 plus times wow. Any, like I was drinking water because I was like I know I'm Anything. dehydrated it was just out everything was coming everything in everything was out. coming out it was just the Man. the word like stomach knots so I sit through the wedding and yeah. I am like and you're sweating like you're the one about to get married Francisco I questioned God that day. <laughs> First of all, it's outside. It's yeah. a 106 degree wedding. And you're wearing a tox? Are you there, wearing, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a suit. I'm, uh, I'm si like Evan's in the wedding. So uh, I'm sitting alone next to this woman who is so delightful. And it was Aunt Viv. And she's like, and I'm listening and I'm like, oh God. I go, what is that? I go, are they playing espresso, the classical version? Mm -hmm. And I said that out loud. And immediately I'm like, don't think about espresso right now. Don't uh, think about espresso. <laughs> and like, Aunt Viv hears me and she goes, you're from LA, right? I go, <laughs> yes. And she goes, can I talk to you about, and I go, oh God, please don't say Jesus Christ. Like, please, like don't. Uh, Have you goes, heard of the good word? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she goes, can we talk about Bridgerton? And I'm like, oh. yes, let's talk about Bridgerton. <laughs> She was, I she, love that, that she does. I know she had she to knew. confide in you. She she's knew. Like, I finally I can talk to somebody. Like that. <laughs> she's my my husband doesn't allow. She's me. like, shut up, Harold. I'm talking about Bridgerton with the gay man. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, this is all I wanted this weekend. <laughs> I told you. I know this is all I wanted. Let me live. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just sweating bullets. Like, <laughs> trust your butt. And <laughs> she's like, did you know that they use contemporary songs and make them classical in the series Bridgerton yeah. and I'm like yes I do they're yeah. called the Vitamin String Quartet and she's like oh. she goes I go yeah I listen to them at home like when I'm cleaning or whatever she's like oh, you can listen to it I'm like yeah on Spotify or whatever yeah. and she's like oh. what's Spotify I know and I'm just like clenching my my, oh. my boy lips oh. like it is just <laughs> <laughs> your boy lips <laughs> <laughs> but where you're like, like so as you're talking, you're oh, like it's 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 like it's, uh, and yeah. I'm literally thinking of both scenarios. So I'm like either I'm gonna get through this or there's going to be a the, scene, the disaster, yeah, and I'm yeah. like we cannot have the scene. Yeah. So I mean, the wedding was great. It was like a nice breeze. Like she had dog, like her dogs were in the wedding. I'm like, oh, those uh. dogs better fucking get up to the front <laughs> and we better like wrap this up. And it was a lovely, lovely, quick 30 minute wedding. We go inside for cocktail hour, but before cocktail hour, I go upstairs and, and that scene from Dumb and Dumber happened. Oh, wow. I'm just like, ah! <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, I have to go back down because Evan's downstairs and they're doing cocktail hour. I had no drinks. Yeah. And then they move us to the wedding area or the reception area where we're all sitting down yeah. at the uh, table. They're about to yeah, the, the, the give us food, whatever. And all that stuff, yeah. They bring over the first course. Ceviche. And it's like ceviche. <laughs> I'm like, no! No, this it was... It's a, a warm ceviche. Oh, God. No, it was like... It was just like a salad. It was like... Okay. But I couldn't... I had like Couldn't two touch. bites of and course. I was full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I, I, I got to go because we were talking to... Uh, you had to go. What do you mean you got to go? I had to get out of there. Okay, okay. I didn't trust anything. All right. Yeah. I Like, we were talking to his friend's mom and she was telling us this, like, beautiful story. And I'm, like, leaning up against the wall. I'm like, I felt like I was going to pass out. Uh, I was like, ooh, something's not right. Yeah. So I go back up to the room, miss the entire reception. Mm. Evan's coming back and forth. He's like, you okay? And I'm like, just go, go yeah. have fun, go have fun. Don't worry about me. And, um, yeah, I just, I missed the whole reception. I had 102 fever. Oh, damn. 
And I was at, miserable. The fever finally broke at wow. like 5 a.m. Uh, the next day, everyone was Did like, you take anything or you were just nothing? No. You just let it ride. I just let it. I raw dog. I you raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sat there and was like, okay, let's, let's, and I just let it run its course. Yeah. The next Literally. day, yeah. The next day was finally okay. And, um, uh, everyone was like, where were you? And I was like, I got food poisoning. And they're like, the Four Seasons? Really? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, you never know. Yeah. I'm glad it just happened to me yeah. and not the whole wedding party. So well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, nobody had Nobody else it had just, it. Yeah, sometimes it's just one, you yeah. know, it's like the the probiotics that we got, all the lean, whatever, something that yeah. hits. Because that happened to me when I went to, so I went to Mexico mm -hmm. City, like, you know, about a month ago. And I've always been like, you know, I would say like I had like my, my stomach's always had this, even though I've been here in the U.S. for a while, I was born in Venezuela. So I still had that Venezuelan stomach where yeah. it's like, tough as nails. Yeah, I can't yeah. go and drink water. Yeah, let's fine. drink habanero yeah, water. Exactly. Yeah. So, but I still knew I was like, I had to do some shows and some stuff over there. So I'm like, let me just be careful. So nothing happened until the last day. I think I went to tacos or something. I ate some tacos. Or something. And then I came back to L.A. And then that's where it got me the same thing. Like oh. then I was like, what the, nothing for like a day. Yeah. Literally. Like it's, just a day. It was like 24 hours. My stomach's still like getting used to stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, it was of course. brutal. Yeah. Like my body was wrecked. Mm. I don't, and I'm glad it was just, it was that way and not this way. Oh no, yeah. It's like, oh, throwing up. Yeah. But it was, it was brutal. So wow. congratulations, Stacey and Craig. <laughs> I'm glad I took the ceviche bullet for you both. Because it would have been a wow. different wedding had it been them. Man. So, but yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah. Well, that was uh, a journey. A, 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 yeah. I know. I Literally. Before you got here, or before we started recording, I was like, I didn't make the reception. And you, what did you think happened? I thought something bad happened that you were like, you know, like... Some, some, you know, something bad happened at the wedding. Somebody said something to you or like a fight <laughs> or something. I don't know. You're yeah. like, we're living, you know? Uh, like, yeah. I, you know, I was going like to say that. you were going to say like, oh, you got drunk and like passed out oh, or something. No, and I'm no, like, no, no, those days are behind me. No, that's why I, I, uh, I assumed that too. I was like, no. No, it was it was just like my body saying, and you're done. And yeah. I was so mad because I love a party. I love like a reception. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Evan comes Especially back. That was like the most part, the most fun part of the wedding is that part. Of oh, the I'm, the party. Evan opens the door and he's like, how are you? And I'm in bed sweating <laughs> and I go, did they play the Quad City DJs? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, did they play Come On Ride the Train? Was LaBouche played? Like, he's like, <laughs> like, like, I'm on my deathbed. Did they play WAP? Was WAP played? Yeah. <laughs> I go, did anybody embarrass themselves? He's like, no, everyone's got their pictures. <laughs> Oh, it hurts to laugh. <laughs> did the did any of the mothers drop it like it's hot? Yeah, it was. What happened to the Bridgerton lady? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, I needed. I need an update on Aunt Viv. I, yeah, I really need to get in Viv. contact with Aunt Viv to, yeah. to to send her the Spotify playlist. Of course, she has no idea about it. Oh uh, well, this uh, speaking of shit hitting the fan. Oh. Uh, this. Oh, did you hear about this story? Yes. Let's get into some stories. Um, I got the scoop. You do. Oh well, I, careful uh, with scoop. Oh, sorry. I yeah, the, it's totally fine. I got the. I got the spoon. There, the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> the spoon. Uh, this is. Uh, this person, I guess, Gwyneth Paltrow um, has an Airbnb. Yeah. In the Hamptons, because sure, why? Of not? course, she needs to make extra cash. Yeah, she needs it. And yeah. this story kind of went around and it got viral um, on the celeb gossip newsletter. Pop bitch, which is what I wanted to name this podcast. <laughs> Pop bitch. I was like, it just doesn't have a, a ring to it. <laughs> Pop bitch. Um, so this is a very, very messy situation. And as someone who can identify with the story, I'm going to read a little bit of it yeah. to you. So Gwen the story goes that a recent house guest of Gwyneth Paltrow's catastrophically shat themselves in mm. bed while staying there, then fled back to the city before they had to face the music. Yes. So um, the the Gwynny in question was Gwyneth Paltrow. So I guess that was like her alias. Like we're not going to pick up on who Gwynny and Gwyneth are. Mm -hmm. And these, needless to say, the blind item did not remain blind. The man was outed. Mm. The article saying this man deserves some some compassion. And yes, I agree. First, don't be so hard on yourself. People have digestive problems all the time. Maybe you ate something bad or like drank a, too like much. Like warm ceviche. 
like warm ceviche, or like if you drink way too much, like you get dehydrated. Yes. Um, or maybe you just ate Gwyneth's food, <laughs> which is called <laughs> goop, and it sounds like <laughs> goop. Poop. Poop, yeah. Um, so this woman or this man actually is saying that he or allegedly shit the bed. Gwyneth found out and it kind of went all over, kind of like gossip girl. Mm -hmm. So um they're saying, where do you go after being outed by Gwyneth Paltrow for shitting her yeah. bed? And people are saying get facial reconstruction, move away from the city, um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um I think it's it's okay. As someone, yeah, because you 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 you've been so you're not changing your face. It's not on purpose. No, no. no. And you know what? I am bringing truth, vulnerability, mm -hmm. bravery. You're facing the music. Yeah, yeah. You know what? And to the Four Seasons Hotel. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> chill the fish better. <laughs> So I don't know. What do you think? Well, I, I, what would you do? Well, it depends on what this guy is in, you know, like what's his cause like, you know, what's his uh business where he's, you know, you know, social circle, because I think Fair. That, that has to do with like, hey, I think if if you're a person that, you know, that promotes, you know, cleanliness. Cleanliness, yeah. Then it's like, yeah, you do have to change your face. Then, yeah. You know, go into go to Turkey or get some plugs, hair plugs, you know, or something. Uh, you know what I mean? We love a Turkish, like, like a, full face. Something like that, like a full, or just a full, just a new face, you know, mm -hmm. maybe. Cause, or, because um, I heard too, it was also about, uh, it was uh, Ozempic that cost it. Ooh, Ozempic shits. Yes. Yeah. So it was that, a combination of that with, you know, drinking and doing, you know. Here's the thing. Rather than the stereotype of doing Ozempic, just get food poisoning. I lost That's like right. eight pounds. Ah, yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say, you look very... Thank you. And it was just like a 24-hour thing. <laughs> and I had perfect. to like stab myself. I did do a liquid IV yesterday. Okay. Thanks for Store Baltimore. Um, but like, yeah, it was easy. Yeah, it's the best. This is one way, you know, and, and it's cheaper. Cheaper, You're not spending quicker. money, yes. So, I mean... So maybe this, is just, maybe this guy should take that. Here's a question of, too. Does she not have a laundry machine mm. in the house? Mm. I mean, look at me. I'm about to move into my place <laughs> with a laundry room. And I'm like, who is this poor woman? That, wait, she has to go to the, the hallway. She has to go to the bank for quarters. <laughs> oh, Aunt Viv, I, I swear. Well, um, I mean, I think, but also like, the thing too is also like, I think the guy also like, why not call her and tell her like, hey, look, I did this. Yeah. Like he left. Like he murdered somebody again. Like it was like I, I did. You know what? But you didn't leave. I stayed. You stayed. I that stayed. that was the big. That's a big, big difference. You, you. <laughs> and like, what did you think was gonna? Happen? Also, like, why? Yeah, like you think people are not gonna found out that you you left some shit. In there. I will say, I thought about it. You did. I thought about leaving. Checking out. Just no. Leaving. Just running. Just running. Running into the running. Day. Running to the yeah. <laughs> just. Me and the crabs, just, ah, this is me now. Just going to the inner harbor, just yeah. going, ah. Yeah. Just, just where the where the bottom feeders belong. <laughs> that was me, where I'm just there, just covered in crabs. Yeah, this Baltimore crabs. Just and some little there. kids like, what happened to him, mommy? Get away, don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He shit the bed. Yeah, he shit the bed in the four seasons. <laughs> uh, well, Gwyneth... I mean, be a little nicer, you know, I guess. And uh, hey, it happens to the best of us. And if you've shit the yeah. bed, please leave a comment in the comment section. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Will people come out after that? Oh, people are going to be like, you are seen. <laughs> you are heard, my king. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> but this is someone who's been shitting the bed for a while. Britney Spears. <laughs> uh, nice, God. nice segue. Yeah, thank you. Britney Spears is calling out her gardener boyfriend, Paul Richard Solis. And Wait, who? who is this? That's her boyfriend. The new one? Yes. Okay. I know. She went from rat boy summer to fat boy summer. <laughs> and, you know, it's summer 
which means she's deleted her Instagram again. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think that will happen every every, every summer season. She, goes. she deletes her Instagram mm -hmm. and then she'll take some time off and then she'll come so back. That's when you know when summer starts when she deletes her Instagram. Yeah, when you know like the days are getting longer, <laughs> she'll just delete her Instagram and we're like, mm, it's here. She's like a groundhog like, day every season. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like move out of here, February. <laughs> We've got a Britney. We have a groundhog Britney for every season. Uh, so she went on Instagram before she deleted it. She says, hey, y'all, I'm single as fuck. <laughs> um, and of course, every headline has to start with this tired trope. Oops, <laughs> she did it again. Oh, no, no, no. Can we change it? I mean, it's the side. The, ugh, get out of here. Yeah. So she called out her boyfriend, Paul Richard Solis, on Instagram and declared she's single as fuck. The princess of pop slammed her ex via her Instagram stories, questioning his behavior in a paparazzi photo taken after she settled her conservatorship case in April. Mm. This is still happening? Oh. <laughs> so her attitude is savage, but her heart is gold. Oh, no. Mm. This is what happens when you're like in your 40s and yeah, you start posting like, this is quotes. my mom. This is what my mom really? shares Really? Is she me. okay? Yeah, no, she's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to ask. I mean, I, we, we settled her conservatorship. You put, yo, you put your mom in a, <laughs> you put your mom in a conservatorship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The minute a woman over 40 puts up a, a like a quote, you're yeah, like, I'm lock like, her up. <laughs> put her somewhere. Put her in a mom, home. I'm taking your bank account. Yes. Um, you yes. let me know you're when you're done. Buying. Yes. Well, and it's it's also just like, oh, it's so... Uh. Well, so I don't understand like these quotes that people should like, I don't know, like what's the... Re like, do people read this and go like, you know what? Yeah. They do. I'm going to change my mind. Or then they'll take it and be, oh, oh you mean about her, Britney Spears? Yeah, like when she posted, like the people, like when you <laughs> posted, do you think people are going to go like... Oh. She sounds fine. Yes, to me. this is right. Yeah, <laughs> she like posted a I, meme. I think to me when people post that, to me, like, oh, there's something going on. Yeah. Like when you're like, why are you sharing this weird quotes about life when it's you know obviously and also it's like I'm fine yeah you're not you but her, but what was it her her heart what was it the what would, what did it say her heart is savage but her soul is gold her attitude is savage but her heart is gold the, 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 yeah I don't it's <laughs> this that, sounds like I, this sounds like a it's Kyle Richards girlfriend country lyric <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a new song that she's writing. It's just like, you know, we got like more. Yeah, your attitude is savage, booter. Party is gold. gold. Yep. <laughs> oops, I did it. Oh, <laughs> she did it again. <laughs> so is this guy who? How did they meet? I didn't even know. Like, so that's her boyfriend. She's hiding in the car. So why was he going ninety to neighborhood with one paparazzi following, only to roll the window down when the paparazzi pulls to the side of me? Spears asks her followers. Mm. Okay, so she's like setting her up, or he, she's setting him up. Um, then he calls his mom and says he's being harassed. Why did he roll the window down with me crying in the seat? The singer went on to post a cryptic quote reading, her attitude is savage, but her heart is cold. Mm. So she she's saying that he set her up with the paparazzi. Oh, oh. there it is. She, he rolled down the window for them when she was like, when and she didn't won. won. One paparazzi. And he, uh, like, rolled down the window and was like, here she is. Oh, God, I got it. It's just... It's really sad when the paparazzi starts dwindling. Exactly, right? When you got, like, <laughs> one. <laughs> it, right? You're just like... It becomes... Oh. <laughs> Do you remember, like, Britney and just, like, she couldn't go they anywhere? couldn't go anywhere. And now she's like... No, she's like... Just one person. The window's down! <laughs> oh, oh, God. Uh, like, they have to go chase the paparazzi. Now they're chasing the paparazzi. Know. Now they're... Wow. I know, but this is this is this the, is the, the 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 guy. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Okay. I mean, what do you think? Oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> he has a criminal record. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't see that part, and then you rolled that. He has a criminal record. He has a oh, criminal okay. record. Yes, I didn't want to assume that. Okay. Just to let everyone know. <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to say anything, but I'm like, oh, okay, there it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but also, hello, mom. I'm in love with a criminal. <laughs> yes, and. Also, she declared oh the criminals the criminals calling his mom to say that his girlfriend's harassing him? Wow. Well, they could tell that is that guy Latino? Yeah. Yeah, you could tell, yeah. Mom. Yeah. Yeah, he's very Hi, mama. Mommy. Yeah. It's She's hurting me. Um, and she also claims that she will never be with another man ever again. For this summer. I know. No, uh, no, I don't think she will never be. So she's going. So that's it? Just celibacy? Nothing? You know what? At this point, like, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Whatever. If she, if, yeah. if Britney was like, I'm going to date women now, 
Go. Yeah, yeah do it. We embrace it. Yeah. Do it. If she wants to be single forever, go. Do it. Just we need someone to get her out of her kitchen. <laughs> she needs, like, I'm tired of these, like, weird. Is she performing? No. Or is she not? Uh, she's, yeah, she's, she needs, yeah, she needs to get and out. And a lot of people are saying she's AI. <laughs> Which I don't know anymore because I don't know what to believe. So what, she's real. dead and now this is a, a new version of uh, Britney? Or, she's not dead. It's just like there's like somebody. It's kind of like in the sense of like Avril Lavigne. Where the, that, that conspiracy theory that she died and was replaced by some girl named Melissa or whatever. Oh. So someone is saying that like she's doing her own thing. There's somebody else playing wow. her okay. in these like videos. Like the teeth are like spaced <laughs> out. The eyes are a little more hollow. Like, she doesn't really look like this. So someone's going in and, like, photoshopping some stranger. And I don't know what to believe anymore. Wow. Well, it could be a perfect... I mean, that's a way to, like, she if she wants to just forget, you know, like, travel around the world without being noticed. This, hey, hire the double, you know? I know. Could be. It's just, it's so, so sad. But do you know who Chet Hanks is? Yes. Okay. The, 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 the black sheep of the, the Hanks, Hanks family. family. Yes. Well, I was watching the. He's uh, a bad Toy Story. He's like you know when the toy, the toys, the good toys and the bad toys. Wait, uh, in Toy in, Story. In Toy Story, like yeah. the neighbor boy. You know there was like I think it was Toy Story three or two. I don't know where like they go into like a like a kindergarten thing and then all the toys oh all the like, toys were bad and like messed a, up. That's Chet Hanks. And they were kind of like adult toys. Yes, like there was the there was like, that. Wait, what? Toys? So the one with like the Barbie legs. <laughs> oh, okay. And it was like a hook. That was a hooker. Oh, I thought you meant adult toys like a like a dildo or something. <laughs> I was like, you Damn. got a friend in me. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a friend in me. <laughs> you got a. <laughs> I was going That's like mommy's toy. It's different. It's different. <laughs> but I want to <laughs> leave it in the drawer. Yeah, because I was like, where did that seem? No, like, just walking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so, does the dildo have legs? I don't know. Well, there was a hook. It was like a hook, and it had like yeah, Barbie legs. That made, yeah, now I remember people that. Were part. Like, oh, that's a hooker. Uh, like they everyone had like a little like yeah, 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 a little tongue in cheek. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. but no, like full like no full yeah. No, Mr. Potato Dildo. <laughs> um, but Chad Hanks, yeah. uh, which while I was I immobilized in the bed over the weekend, his, his dad, Tom Hanks, I was watching the CNN series, like the 90s, the 80s, uh, yeah, the 2000s. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. They're great. Yeah, so yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. He was an executive producer on it. I was like, oh, good for Tom, Tom Hanks? Hanks? Yeah, okay. Well, Chad Hanks has responded to hate groups who adopted his white boy summer meme. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So... I guess he went on Instagram uh, and he inadvertently emboldened white supremacists <laughs> and other hate groups, according to a recent report from the Global Project Against Hate and Extremism. The younger Hanks jokingly coined the phrase white boy summer, sometimes abbreviated as WBS, building off trends such as rapper Megan Thee Stallion's hot girl summer. Hanks said the phrase was intended to promote an embrace of fly white oh, boys. Oh, um, um, uh, sugar, sugar. But Summer. come on, not fly white boys. <laughs> no one's saying fly white boys anymore. Oh, uh, but Sugar Ray was the original but white summer that boy. That was 1997. Yeah, but I think that's why he wants. Uh, I don't know. Now Hanks is responding to the co-opting of a social media movement by extremists a day after uh, GPAHE's report was written about in the New York Times in an Instagram post uploaded on Wednesday. Hanks clarified that White Boy Summer is all about about, quote, love. Oh, yes. He says, white boy summer was created to be fun. Love for white people. <laughs> <laughs> love, now in white. <laughs> white boy summer was created to be fun, playful, and a celebration of fly white boys who love beautiful queens of every race. <laughs> <laughs> Way to throw that in there. Wow. <laughs> Anything else that has been twisted into some something to support any kind of hate or bigotry against any group of people is deplorable, and I condemn it. This looks like, you know when you come out of uh, Trader Joe's or Whole Foods yeah. and people are asking for, like, donations? Yes. This is what it feels like. The guy's like, hey, you want to sign for White Boy Summer? We're <laughs> <laughs> do I? Where do I sign? Hey, we're, we're, we just love every queen of every race. We love queens. But wasn't he like, wasn't he like, I feel like like years ago, Candace Thompson was like, 
went after like went after after what? Like, oh, really? Because wasn't he like he was doing what's it called? Where you or culturally appropriating? Like he was oh, like they, Jamaican. They, they, they wasn't because he had dreads. It was or like something, like yeah, and he was like yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. people oh, were yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. Chad, <laughs> relax. No, you you can't you can't do that. what summer? But also, <laughs> I have a story. <laughs> okay, I used to work with Chad Hanks. Oh, you did? Yeah, so you know him. You, you I, know the original White Boy Summer? I was there. Wow. Um. He used to sell shoes at... Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? This took a turn. It, it, it took a very yeah. other turn. I'm like, He's Chad a, a Hanks, son. Yeah. It's like, by the way, he used to work he, at Payless Shoes. He used, no, well, Fred Siegel Shoes, the men's department. Oh, okay. At the shoe store. Really? And I would work in the restaurant, and he would come in and be like, hey, hey, hey. hey he did that shit. Oh, did the, he was like, hey, yo, dog, let me... Uh, He's like, let me get a lemonade. And I'd be like, mm, okay. And I'd get him a lemonade. And he's like, put that on my tab. I'm like, you sell <laughs> shoes. There's no tab. <laughs> what? Yeah, their you tab is a, a tab. credit card. Also, yeah. Who <laughs> you sell shoes. You don't have a tab. Also, who, yeah, that's also, this is not like the 1920s. Yeah. Like, who does this? Like, put it on my tab. Put it on my tab. I'm like, like no, you like, pay just for pay. it. Yeah, open, yeah. Uh, so, so what did he, was he coining the white phrase? Uh, well, white I think boy, we go back, back real then? quick. Yeah, he just kind of was just like, no, we're not doing this because a number of extremist groups were just kind of like, okay, if Chet Hanks says so, it's now officially white boy summer. Um, mm. So despite uh, his insistence that the term is not meant to be used in a hateful <laughs> manner, many members of the far right meow, 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 still use white boy summer as a rallying cry for white supremacy. Okay, guys, it's election year. Do not let Chet Hanks <laughs> influence this election. Uh, but, but also, by the way, he says is uh, he clarified that he was not... not Talking, this is in what he's saying, Corden, not talking about Trump, you know, NASCAR type white. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Like, by the way, that's not the white I was talking yeah. about. He just was talking about, like, Formula One white. <laughs> when he like, first what? coined the term, he clarified that he was, quote, not talking about Trump. He was talking about, you know, NASCAR type white. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, well, in that case. <laughs> yeah, like, what? I mean, put that in a Britney Spears meme, and everyone's like, okay, she's okay. She's good. God. Which is actually... What does he think, what does he think NASCAR... I type know, white I don't is. know what that, yeah, like, it's like, what does that mean? He's saying it's like, that's bad. Oh, that's true, man. You know? That's not bad. Uh, I mean, what, is, what, is, what do you guys have in Venezuela? Do you have, like, brown boy fall or? <laughs> <laughs> we do <laughs> brown boy every day, year. Now, uh, <laughs> over there, no, it's, it's, it's funny because Venezuela, like, if I guess it's not the big difference, <laughs> it's, it's more like uh, classism. So it's more like, Poor white summer, or like, or poor, no, poor summer, or rich summer. Oh, you know, it could be like that, like rich boy summer. Yeah, or poor boys, you know, like that could be like the thing. I just feel like, like I like, I like hot boy. I like yeah. hot girl. Yeah, don't put a. I think don't we put don't a. Need... Don't don't put a label like a full like a like a thing you that people. You can't do like you can't be like, like white it... or black or blue or brown. Like just put just say why you know boy or girl like you said like that. Like if as the seasons go along, and say you have a friend named Ashley who mm -hmm. spells it with a G H, and she's <laughs> like, guys, we're gonna have white girl Christmas. Like you can't. <laughs> Ashley has to be out of the group. Yeah, of course. She, yeah, Ashley she's has... out of the group tech. <laughs> Drop her. <laughs> you guys, we're going to have hot boy Halloween. I mean, that's just gays in general. Uh, well, we are going from white boy summer to the hot girl of the summer, and that is Chapel Roan. And Chapel Roan is just having the best year ever. She's got multiple songs on the charts. People are falling in love with her. She's worked her ass off for 10 years and yeah. finally getting the recognition. But now she's ha having to come out and explain herself to people as to why she's being overtly sexual in her songs, which I say, get out of here. Who cares? Who cares? Do you know Chapel Row? I've heard a uh, couple of songs, but uh, I don't know. Yes. I love it when straight people know. <sighs> oh. Yes. 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 I'm married, so now I'm my wife. Yes, oh, she's me. everything. Like, yeah. like, honestly, I said this to Dave Holmes a couple weeks ago. I was like, my Taylor Swift is here. 
I love her. Where is she from? Ireland? Where? Where do you think Chapel Run's from? Ireland. Ireland? Why? Rowan? Mm. No? No. <laughs> It's okay. it's her it's like her grand I think it's like one of her grandparents' names. Okay. Um, but she is not from there. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> She's not from Ireland, but All I right. get it. I get it. She All looks right. like Merida. Uh um, yeah, I thought it, you know, brave. Like, something like that. Yeah, like give me yeah. give me that vibe. Yes, she's very um I wanna say she's from the Midwest, actually. I think oh, okay. she's from Missouri. Can we look that up real quick? And we'll cut here. And we will come back and be like, it's yes. Missouri. I think it's Minnesota. Oh, Missouri. That's Missouri. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I'm a fan. Right. Yes, she is from Missouri, Willard, Missouri. Okay. Um, and she uh, coined the phrase from her, her, I think one of her grandparents was named Chapel. Got it. Um, or the last name was Chapel, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but yes, yeah, so she has the hot song of the summer. Hot to go, which I was like one of the songs of the summer. Good luck, babe, is even better. The whole album is just so good. Uh, she grew up in a conservative Christian household in Missouri, um, and she's not squeaky clean like Taylor Swift. Instead, mm -hmm. Roan pays homage to drag queens while performing with her elaborate outfits and raunchy stage moves. It's really not that raunchy, okay? No. Yeah. I, I mean, we all we all yeah, saw JoJo Siwa at Pride. Just <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so she's now explaining herself yeah. and, um, people are calling her this generation's Madonna. Uh, my mom always gets so happy when I put on Pink Pony Club because she says it reminds her of being a teenager and dancing to Madonna. And that's how, you know, Chapel Roan is a pop princess. Mm -hmm. She says, my songs are so overly sexual on purpose because an it's an expression of me that I wasn't able to express growing up in a Christian household in a Christian town that was very conservative. That makes that, sense. Yeah. She's been called an LGBTQ icon and has also earned comparisons to pop legends like Cyndi Lauper and Lady Gaga. Uh, one fan called Roan the second coming of Cindy Lauper while an ex-user likened her to Lady Gaga saying it reminds me so much of how I felt when I saw Gaga every single red carpet. When people say Chapel is the next Lady Gaga, it feels like a very interesting reality where everything has been shaped sp specifically for this moment and for us to work together. I totally get this. Mm -hmm. So is she the, the nemesis of Taylor Swift? Of who? Oh, yes. Yes. We finally found one that could... Uh, yeah. Honestly, like her... Like uh, in a good way, like a good competitive... Uh, yes, but like, also it's like, I love that there's an alternative. That's what I mean. That's what I, what I mean. mean. That's what I was going to say. It was like, it's not a, not trying to put no. like one is good or the other. It's good to have like... Yeah. It's, it's like it's like in sports, like having like another like yes. player that like in the same level that like... I like this, like, I, I'm a tennis fan. So, for example, like, when it was Federer and Nadal. Yeah. Completely different styles. Nadal was, like, gritty and, like, just wide. Yeah. You know, more like, I guess, hair. Yes. You, you either know. want, you know, uh, sweet exactly. or salty. Yeah, You know, exactly. I'm a savory kind of me person. Me too, me too. I like a good habanero. It's the second time. I, yeah, I, like a, I like a good warm ceviche. You I know like I mean? tahine <laughs> rims, you know? I like, yeah, I love something hot coming out of me. Hot to go. <laughs> I need, I need, I'm yeah. the same way. I like savory, like salty. I do too. Like, I don't want like, you know, not like, since, like, like, I like, and also like a little edge to stuff. Yeah, you know what and I, mean? I like, something it's, that's, I like campy, I like rock and roll. Like it's like, exactly. I, I, you know, this, this, this. Also, because also to me, like, I like going to concerts. It's like to me, I feel like I would enjoy this concert more than a, a, a girl concert. spinning around in a flowy like, dress. All right, cool. Yeah. You know, because you know this is you know it's like I said, it's more theatrical. More yeah, like, I want you know. like f f yeah. fire and exactly. sparks and like rock and roll and guitars. I don't need like I'm gonna give my hat away to someone. <laughs> cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, give me like that. Like yeah, dress yeah, up yeah. like divine. Like uh. It's great. So uh, here it is. Roan, whose stage name is an homage to her grandfather. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dennis Chapel, and his favorite song, The Strawberry Roan, released her first uh. EP, School Nights, in 2017. And she's been going at it for 10 years. So I think it's kind of crazy that she's like having to explain her sexuality. Mm -hmm. or And it's not, honestly, it's not shit we've heard. Well, what's her uh, sexuality? Like, what's her, what's she explaining? She, I mean, I feel like she's kind of like fluid. 
Okay. I mean, I think she, I don't know if she's come out as a lesbian. She might have. I, ju- I don't know anymore. Mm-hmm. But honestly, it's like, who gives a shit? Yeah, Just give me cares? good music. Yeah, exactly. your life. Go for exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, Taylor Swift was dropped. She got in trouble because she said something, you know, she dropped the F bomb. But I'm like, it's just weird that she's having to explain herself because it's like, yes, you grew up in a Christian household. You have a lot of these people who are like ex Mormons who yeah. are like, I'm going crazy. Exactly. They go then and yes. they're on their level. Yeah. Because yeah, they've been so, because they've been so constrained you know? and yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I think it's great. And she's like, young. I'm like, go for it. Like, who gives a yeah. shit? Yeah. And it's also, Authentic. Yeah. It's I authentic. Think that's, I think that's the main word. It's authentic when it comes... Because it makes sense for her, like, you know, from what I read about yeah. her, like, background and, like, growing up in a conservative and then, like, she's gonna... Then it makes sense completely. Yeah. Like, either either she go, she would have been full conservative Christian rock and roll oh, music. Oh, God, that's all we need. You know? <laughs> or, yeah. or, you know, or this. So, uh, you know, obviously this is much better. So it's like... But, but yeah. So with authenticity, it's like she doesn't have to be like, "Hey guys, I'm going to drink Fireball on stage." Exactly. Like it's not, you know, "Hey guys, you want to see me do this?" Oh yeah. Well, I think <laughs> doing now. You like it? It's like just stop. By the way, that's doing. that's how I open my sets now. You should just, <laughs> "Hey guys." Hey guys, hey guys, you guys. What are you guys? <laughs> so are you guys together? <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys dating? Where are you guys from? <laughs> oh my God, stop looking at us. <sighs> Just uncomfortable crowd work. <laughs> but that's what I, I think that you hit a great point because I think when you're not authentic, that's when people have to come up with shit like that because mm-hmm. they, they're not being their true self. So yes. they see other people being authentic and then they go like, well, I got to do something crazy. And then they go to, it's like, well, this is not real, man. This it's not, really yeah. kind of funny that you said this because now I'm putting it into like our art form, yeah. stand-up, where you see somebody go on stage and you're like, that's not you. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you see someone, they're like, hey, <laughs> guys ever get fingered? And you're like, what are you doing? Wait, why do you like, sound that's like that's not you at all. Sounds like a Nickelodeon show. <laughs> you guys get fingered? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys like, <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, come on. But yeah, and also that's the thing too, it's like, it's like when I feel like it's like when we're in the on the hallway before we go up. Mm-hmm. Like if people are talking to us, we go up. We sound the same. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, oh yeah, that's the same person that I was talking to. Mm-hmm. And I was when I even when I first started here as a door guy, I would see the the other comics go up, and I'd be like, I was so like, I was like, wow, they just they're the same person. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's authentic. Yeah. you know, that's kind of just how you gotta be. Like when you start putting up another word, that's like eh, it's not believable, and then people don't connect with that either. You know what I mean? Or it's just like a weird, like, oh, now you're a weird caricature. Yeah, then you're like of what? something that you're. I know for a fact that you are not in the hallway. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, we, we all want to find love. You know, Chet Hanks, Brittany. Uh, we've all fallen in love with Chapel, um, and now even the Sims are polyamorous with the latest oh. Love Struck game update, which okay. I never knew. Um, I know Sims was still happening. Thank you. It is. Sims is like a whole thing. It's a whole thing now. It's like a whole like, like like cultural thing. Like, like a whole like porn. Porn. They have Sims. Oh, it's Sims. It's just porn now. Well, it, well, it's not like that's all it is. But but there's there's like people like, have like a porn with a story. But you know, like <clears throat> people have tapped into like different kind of Sims mm-hmm. multiverses, okay. and now gamers are taking their virtual relationships. To the next level, EA Games announced this month that they've added a polyamorous romantic aspect to the popular life simulation game, The Sims 4. Coming in July of... Uh, coming July 25th, there we are. Coming July 25th, the update is part of the game's latest expansion pack, dubbed Love Struck, which includes a chance to explore their in-game city of love, Ciudad, Ciudad Enamorada. Enamorada. Yes, which means city in love. Hmm? Oh yeah, that's oh yeah, is that's, that it. That, okay. that's, <laughs> like, I was like, where, I'm like, I'm right, I'm like, where is that part? I was like, <laughs> you like look at me and you're like, no, that's not right. No, Ellen, that's not true. <laughs> no, that's you true. were invited. That is um, City in love. Yes. See that in what I uh, <laughs> Where Sims can join their lover on a romantic excursion, as well as a as very own dating app, Cupid's Corner. Sims who struggle to keep the spark alive now also risk the possibility of death Wait, by heartbreak. So you die if you don't get in. <laughs> what the hell? Well, that's a, so I mean, if you don't find love, you die as a Sims. That should be real life. <laughs> 
Like all uh, these people on like... So what's the age kata? If you're running out of swipes, <laughs> get out of here. If you get to the end of you any of end, those apps, sorry, we're, you're done. Yeah, We're just, out of people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Love Struck Expansion Pack's new romantic boundary system allows users to customize their sims' preferred relationship structures, including forms of non-monogamy by adjusting their levels of romantic exclusivity and capacity for jealousy. This allows for sims to date multiple sims without impact to other relationships. Ah, cheating? If only that were true wow. in real life. God. So cheating is allowed and Cheating is allowed, but also like no repercussions. Of course, it's going to be fine. fine. Yeah. Players can also customize their sims' turn-ons and offs and check the status of their relationship satisfaction. The more dates your sims take, the more of a whore they'll be. No, the higher <laughs> their romantic skill level soars, which could launch them on track to become a romance consultant. Oh, so you become a life <laughs> coach uh. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's that's the winning yeah no my sims has been around <laughs> he's now a romance consultant uh, uh no wonder fuck. you're single <laughs> yeah john yeah, you quit playing fucking man. Sims every day. <laughs> Meet real people. Yeah. They'll also have access to multiple romantic dynamics. For example, two Sims falling in love. Wholesome. Okay. Sharing a high sexual connection. Steamy. Navigating conflict. Strained and stuck in a breakup and a makeup cycle. Unpredictable. Oh, oh wow. I have wow. that same, I have that same relationship that every one whole day. Just what? yeah, that's just <laughs> that's one what, day. That's what that's not a relationship, yeah. Uh, so just as real people come with baggage, so too do update Sims who can be characterized as love addicted, emotionally avoidant, or anxiously attached. This sounds too stressful. Yeah, like I don't want to. I mean, also like I know, and I, I'm thinking, are this? <gasps> are you playing with people online and then? I think I, I yeah. Let's see. The Sims have expanded their gender and sexuality options in recent years, including a spectrum of sexual orientation settings. Last year, gender affirming clothing such as binders and scars indicating sexual, spell sexual right reassignment surgery were added for Sims who identify as trans. Is this used to meet real people, or is this just playing? I think you're just playing a game. I mean, I'm sure there's like a package where you can like. This is where we're at. We're meeting like exactly. Ready Player One. We're meeting people yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I think right now you're just playing a game, but then you're going to have those nerds who are like, we met playing oh, Sims oh. 4. <laughs> oh. And, and then, then you, you go to the wedding. It's a whole Sims wedding. And, and you it's gotta, just a bunch of people being like, flurgin, schlurgin, dirgit, burger, dirgit, burger, burger. You have to wear the thing. I'm the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, like, <laughs> like the first song, and everyone's like, and you see uh, Aunt Eve going like, <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, well, good luck, wow. everybody out there. Uh, we've got, uh, have you heard about this? this yes, you, you we have? were talking about it, yes. You the, and your wife? No, no, I was talking here with some comics here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So the Netflix man with a thousand kids uh, is subject. I don't just do everything just with my wife. But. Okay, well, I don't <laughs> say. I mean, what, I don't know. I don't know, like, what you're watching. I mean, you're not, not what playing I, Sims 4 at home with your wife, you know? I have a life, too. I don't know. <laughs> so this documentary came out called Man with a Thousand Kids, and yeah. this guy's name is Jonathan Major, defends his serial sperm donation. He's a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the doctor who's like, we can get rid of this real quick. No, so the subject of a man with a thousand kids is defending himself amid the release of Netflix's new documentary. Jonathan Jacob Major, who previously admitted to spending as many as 50,000 oh, 50, hours mm -hmm. in sperm donation. So that's 50,000... Yanks? Know, uh, yes. Uh, 50,000... The chafing. Oof. Oh, with over the past 15 years, denied claims he's fathered up to a thousand children. So I don't know where oh, they so get this denying. number. I don't know where they base it on. Uh, this content creator said nothing, uh, noting the more accurate number is around 550. <laughs> oh, okay. okay sorry. All right. <laughs> got it. Got it. We got to go lower than 50,000 or whatever. How many? He said a thousand? Yeah. Okay. So it's not a thousand, it's what? 500. And I'm like, you know what? It's like because it sounds better to promote mm. a show to be a thousand. I'm like, mm. the 550. Like, yeah. yeah, I don't want to watch that. That's shit. like being like my 600 pound life and being like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm 500 and 
and 30 pounds. <laughs> I need everyone to relax. Where, you, where are you getting those extra 60 pounds? Yeah, I had celery covered in blue cheese deep fried today, okay? That's a vegetable. Yeah. Um, while the documentary came out this month, a uh, major has is, uh, is been noted as a scammer who is accused of traveling the world, deceiving mothers into having his babies on a mass scale. Weird. Yeah. Uh, he goes, I don't know much about it because I didn't participate in it. It's what they think about me and what others say about me. I was right in not participating for myself personally because they first wanted to call it the fertility fraudster. That's not a title I can work with. Oh, okay. <laughs> So the man with a thousand <laughs> babies is like, okay. Look, I'm not a frost. I'm just to 550. Yeah, it's and just this is relax. Um, <laughs> I mean, he says, although the documentary features interviews with multiple passionate and aggr uh, grieved parents who felt duped by him, he maintains his intentions were purely to help families and need to have children. I am more sad that they decided to change the lives of all my children, my donor children, he shared. It's not about me. It's about the parents and the children. Okay, you're a psychopath. <laughs> so he just went out there and just donated sperm to... Yeah, no, so yeah. So he's... And I heard too also, he sometimes even had sex with the moms. Oh. Like, like some were like donations and some were like really like... So he would just them. go out and hook up with these girls yeah. and get them pregnant and leave? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, this is a guy... Which is yeah, he looks like the lost Hanson brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, Bob. <laughs> um, Bob. Yeah, I mean it's it is pretty wild. Wow. Like, like would I'll you have... would you donate? Uh... No, no. <laughs> well, okay, no, no. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I. I did know somebody who did, and then they found out that, like, his sperm was, like, all mutated and weird. He oh, had, like, two okay. heads. Oh, so this is what it is, the whole, uh, one of the things that we were talking about or whatever. It's, like, is because he's doing all this stuff, then it's, like, obviously there's going to be brothers or sisters that are going to, like, or oh, brothers. And brothers. Yeah. So, like, but they don't know. Because, yeah. you know, there's a thing, too, like, if you're, like, there's, like, a... Uh, I don't know, like, I don't know what it's called, but, like, if you're, like, you might feel, if you're, like, connected with a family, but you don't know their family, but you can still feel attracted to them. Because Maury Povich. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the syndrome called. Yeah, Maury yeah, Pop yeah. The yeah. Maury Povich syndrome. Yeah, the Maury Povich syndrome. He is your father. You guys are cousins. Ah! Your brother and sister. But no! Yeah. yeah, I mean, I get it. And then you're, like, creating these mutant babies. And then, of course, and then it just becomes that we're kids, yeah. Okay, we have time for a couple more stories. Justin Timberlake and Tiger Woods are opening a bar in Scotland after pop star's DWI oh. arrest. Um, the world tour? <laughs> this is going to be horrible for the tour. What tour? The world tour! <laughs> That's my favorite, and it goes with any meme it's out there. Perfect. It's perfect. So they're um, opening up this sports bar, uh, which is very strange. Uh, and they're opening a, let's see, in light of the success of their New York City flagship sports bar, the Mirrors Crooner and famed golfer opening a second bar in St. Andrews, Scotland. Oh, what could go wrong? <laughs> Who loves to drink? Scottish people. Yeah. Timberlake and Woods will transform the famed new picture house cinema into a high-end T-squared social location and will feature... State-of-the-art sports simulators, duck pin bowling, and darts while also preserving two original cinema screens to show respect for the venue's deep history, according to the publication. Okay. Oh. oh it's okay. So then... The sports bar will be located in St. Andrews, which is a hot spot for golf. Real estate documents state the new bar will allow... Locals to to experience a broader range of cinema, dining, and entertainment, and will be crucial in helping to secure a cinema offering going forward. The sexy back crooner, who also has a passion for golf, has played on the country's legendary links and even competed in the Alfred Dunhill Championship in 2019. Um, Why are they doing this? What's uh... I honestly have no idea. I mean, it's like bad timing. Yeah, right? Like, I mean, you just well, got... Tiger Woods drive off a hill? Yeah, he got... That's and... why he started the whole... Uh, his whole demise of being yeah. such a great golfer was... And then Justin Timberlake was just arrested for DWI. Um, let's see. So he's oh, definitely, yeah. like, going on the road still. Oof. Yeah, his <laughs> Tiger's looking... What is the golf club bar? I mean, they. what are they calling it again? Um... 
It actually sounds pretty cool. I like it. You know what, Lee? You're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> These, this, he has like cheated on his wife. Uh, both of them have. Uh, Tiger has been arrested for a DUI in 2017. Justin Timberlake just got one this year. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, you know what we need to do? Open a sports mm -hmm. bar for drunk Scottmen. And um, yeah. What, and how they even meet? I didn't even know they I'm were sure in, they met like I like how they are <laughs> <laughs> met in court. They met in court. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they were like, "Can I use your uh, attorney?" You know, like, but like, cause my thing it was like, yeah, I get, for example, like the Breaking Bad, like, you know, tequila. You know, those guys mm -hmm. obviously, but they they're just so random. Like, I'm like, why do they even came up? And they already, I didn't know they even had a bar already. Oh gosh, I mean. What are some possible names of this sports bar? Do we have names? We have drink, drive, cheat, repeat. Okay. Um, <laughs> we also have side piece, which okay. could be like, you know, a side dish. Yeah. Uh, Karma's a bitch would be, you know, that's, that's a, a, that's a one. freak one. Yeah. I think it should be called T-W-I, T-E-E-W-I. <laughs> that's my personal favorite. Um, uh, how about... um? Um, I want my sexy back, <laughs> or just like I want my license back. I want that's a good one. Back. I want my license back, or uh, or you just call it what tour? Which one? <laughs> what tour? What tour? <laughs> That'd be the best because he also works for golf and and music. Because the what tour, tour. like the, the warp tour. tour, but what the, the what, what tour? tour. Yeah, what tour? and in order to get in, the password is like, sir, how do you want? It's like when you knock, it's like, can I go in? Give me the password. The world tour. Yeah, the world. This is going to affect the world tour. <laughs> um, And finally, we have time for BB Rexa. This poor girl, I swear to God, she's finally had it officially. And she is letting everyone know she has recently kicked a fan out of her concert for throwing this. Do you know the story about BB Rexa? No. Every concert she has, someone throws something at her, whether it's a cell phone that hits her in the wow. face, like violently. People are throwing things at like her. In, like not because she wants, in perp, like people are doing it just to fuck well, with her. Well, because it happened and it was recorded so where she got doing... hit in the face and it like fucked her up, like, yeah. like hurt her. I think she had to go get stitches or something. And now people are like, just throwing wow. shit at her on stage. So she has had it officially and she went viral um, at a recent concert because the concert goer uh, threw something at her show. Do we actually have the video of her? Yeah. So. Let's see. Stage, I will take you for everything. Oh, shit. Which one? Which one? Point to the person I want to see him. And Ouch. Get the out. That's it. Oh. Yeah, Wait, is that Justin Timberlake they're kicking out? <laughs> Why is he drinking? <laughs> First of all, I would never have the balls to throw something. That's yeah, exactly. At a, at like a celebrity. Also, even like, okay, I'm going to pay for a ticket. Get like, there early because yeah. I have to be there close to the stage. Yeah. So I have to get there even before, you know, mm -hmm. and then do all that shit to then get kicked out. And they get like, thrown out of a concert. Yeah. Like you got, but like, like have the, like that is some mental shit right of there. Course, that's like, the con like the entertainer has to stop and be like, who did it? Oh, it's you. Yeah. And then points to me and I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, get the fuck out. And I'm like, and everyone's like, ah! and I'm like, okay, she got me, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Can I get my phone back? <laughs> no, it's in her. It's yeah, she got hit in the face. Jeez. Um, at her concert in New York. Uh, she was performing at the rooftop at Pier 17 in Manhattan when a concert goer hurled a mobile phone at her, wow. striking the side of her head. And what and like what's the re like is there what's the reason to th like did she say like mental why? illness? These kids There's are no not reason. okay. I don't know why we're going to concerts to like throw shit at people. And I just feel bad for her because this happened one time, she, which is assault. Yeah. You've assaulted someone in front of uh, thousands of people and have ruined their experience. And now we're not making this a TikTok trend. No, this yeah, exactly. This is not those Thai pop, <gasps> whatever, yeah, like being cool. Eat yeah. a Thai pod yeah, like, and like then a normal person. Your house. Yeah. yeah. 
God. Like, these are the people who need, like, to eat Tide Pods. So yeah, don't, don't stay at your house and throw shit to yourself. Don't, don't, don't. God, why are you going to? So, I mean, and that's that's where she's at now. She's, like, stopping her concert to be like, if you throw anything for me, at me, I will take everything from you. Like, no questions asked. She's like, going to have will... to do, like, Dave Chappelle, where she's confiscates the... the... Which I kind of think they should. They should, right? Also, enjoy the fucking concert. Enjoy. Nobody wants to see the oh. videos of a crappy ass... I don't want to go to a concert and just see this. Yes, exactly. It's also like, no, but the videos suck, too. It's like, yeah. you can't even, like, if you post it online, like, you who can't cares? hear the sound. It's like, who cares? Enjoy. You bought the fucking money. You spent 500 bucks, and now you're just going to watch it on your, through your phone. Yeah, and who's going back and, like, watching the concert nobody, on their phone? Nobody's going. No one. Nobody. You I do would one picture for remembrance after the concert or before numbers, the concert. Little video, little that's video, it. we're done. You and don't need to... Yeah, exactly. What, are you selling it online? I don't want your 5G experience, Dave. <laughs> um, so the the police later arrested and charged Nicholas Malvania. So this, this is in the first event. This is the first event from her first assault, because that's where we're at, uh, from New Jersey with felony assault in connection. He to the thought events. it would be funny. Yeah, he thought it'd be funny. That's what an idiot. That's that's literally what I he mean, said. And you're 27. You're 27. Like, you're you're still, grown. Like not 17. 27. Dude. He admitted to assaulting the singer with the item because he thought it would be funny. Well, she needs to sue the shit out of him. Yeah. Because she thought it would be funny. Yeah. Oh. Anyways. Now he's not gonna uh, have money for his Sims game. Yeah. Go be polyamorous in your mom's basement. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, Francisco, did you have fun? I had a really great time. So man. glad you were here. Thanks today. for having me, man. Of course, anytime. And I always watch your, you know, your clips. And the I was clips, like, the clips are banging. And I was like, I want to be there. Well, you're here. Yeah, I'm so excited. So, uh, please tell everyone where they can watch your special, yeah. where they can follow you, any shows you come on on the road. Oh, by the way, I have a question. Yes, are we doing lives again? Because I, it's always, I am doing live. It's always I'm doing yes. Francisco Ramos is yeah. live, and I'm like, we're doing you know the what? lives again. We are because it were it, it helps with people with the algorithm when because I got so many people to be like, when are you coming to this city? I'm like, I'm coming. Okay, it's right there, and then they buy the tickets right there. So like it it helps with like you know doing it once in a while because sometimes but you're not in the cities doing lives are you no no you're I'm doing, doing it like more? like like randomly you okay. know but then I'm promoting when people are asking when are you coming to New York I'm like oh I'm coming to New York here it is and they go to the link here and then they buy it because the reach of like whatever you post or something doesn't reach to all their okay. followers so sometimes that's good to kind of get them aware of it it's a good idea because it puts you right on top. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's well, like, it's just it's just for like, I use it just for promoting and it's, it's helped a lot. Well, good, because the last time I was live was like during COVID and everything uh, was fine until I had those like losers come in there and I'm like, we're not, and people were like fighting losers? in the comments. Oh, no, no, no. I'm like, get out of here. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. I had like people who were actually there to like have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People who were like, dur, 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 and I'm oh, like, no, we're not no, doing this. No, no. So maybe, I've been noticing a lot of people have been doing Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it, it's worked, I mean, in terms for promotion, yeah. like, to promote just to kind of make people aware because again the how the algorithm sometimes it it doesn't go to especially to the cities that you mm -hmm. want to reach or whatever you know mm -hmm. so yes okay. do it good to know I, I suggest you do it and where can people find you all that yeah you everything. can dates all of yes. it yes I uh, uh Instagram F Ramos comedy that's uh F Ramos comedy that's on TikTok all the ones you know Facebook there uh Francisco e Ramos .com for upcoming dates and then my dates that I have coming up I have uh I have Houston August thirtieth. I have uh, a Bellflower August tenth. I have uh, a, a, a Orlando September nineteenth. Mm. October, I mean New York October fourth, and then Madrid uh, October nineteenth and Ooh. twenty. One show in English and one show in Spanish. Cool, very yeah. cool. And uh, I will be at the mic drop in San Diego on Thursday, July the eleventh. I might go live and see what happens. Do it. That. Yeah, but Do please it. get your tickets. Go to mikedrop.com, mikedropcomedy.com yeah. for tickets. See you Thursday, July 11th. And as always, we'll see you next time here on the Just Saying Podcast. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Bye.